started and she came to me and she's like, I want to do a real project. I want to do a real experiment. I want to do some science that's going to help me get into grad school. And so um, I thought, oh, what am I going to do with you, <laughs> right? So what are you interested in? How can we approach this? And so it has been a lovely journey, um, a very dense journey, I think. Um, she's got a great project. We are taking just a second, so um, Katie is an out-of-stater, <laughs> and so we're getting mom and dad ready for video to watch. So um, we tried to live stream, that was not gonna happen, so we are doing our version. Um, so I'm gonna let Katie start if we are ready as a family. Are we good? I think we're good. So, great. Okay, great. All right, hi everyone, my name is Katie, and I'm a senior biology major here. Like Dr. Sharp said, my title of my thesis Establishing the foundation for a research course investigating neurodegenerative diseases. And specifically, this talk will be on Parkinson's disease. And so my thesis was broken up into two different phases. So phase one was where I really wanted to learn about these common laboratory techniques and three in vivo or animal models that I could implement here at GC. As well as in phase one, I re-established the biological research course here where honor students and non-honor students can come and take that course. And phase two of my experiment was actually conducting my independent experiment utilizing this model organism called Drosophila melangaster or commonly known as the fruit fly. <laughs> And so the first laboratory technique that I wanted to learn about was gel electrophoresis. So how gel electrophoresis works is I take a DNA or RNA and I load it into this gel box where it runs from the negative to a positive end. And it's running from a negative to a positive end because DNA has a negatively charged sugar phosphate backbone. And so once this migrates through the gel, it, it is separated by its molecular weight and size. And I had to learn many variations of gel electrophoresis, such as agarose gel electrophoresis, capillary gel electrophoresis, two-dimensional gel electrophoresis, and sodium doedecyl polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, also commonly known as SDS PAGE. And so what gel electrophoresis's purpose is, um, I could use it in future uh, common laboratory techniques or, it, or even in bigger experiments. Uh, the second common laboratory technique that I wanted to learn about was Western blotting. So it has the same initial steps as a gel electrophoresis, um, but the difference is I'm separating proteins rather than DNA or RNA. So once it gets migrated through the gel, it gets blotted onto this specialized membrane called a nitrocellulose membrane or a PBDF membrane. And what that membrane is supposed to do is um, to reduce artifacts or reduce background noise and be able to visually see the targeted protein. And so here's an actual result that I conducted um, over the summer at University of Virginia. These yellow boxes are the targeted proteins I was specifically looking at and the bottom row are beta actin, beta actin or my loading control. And why you need a loading control is to be able to distinguish um, the protein's actual density. So thicker and darker bands mean more protein was expressed when thinner and non-visible bands mean less protein was expressed. The third common laboratory technique I learned about was polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. It's also known as a thermocycler. And the purpose of this is to take low concentrations or amount of DNA and be able to amplify